Radio. Good morning, everyone. Um, today is going to be a very interesting day. We've uh, stopped off here on our way to the bar, get some liveys. Dave's into them straight away. Look at that. Christmas tree, mate. Right. It's a good start. We've got a little mate in the background here, come to say good day. He's a resident, he's here all the time, man. Last time I came here, he was just here going, <laughs> trying to steal my liveys. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to try and hopefully put an end to the uh, age-old myth if uh, bleeding your fish and not bleeding your fish actually makes a big difference. So, I've had a chat to a mate of mine, Andrew Mirosh. Um, if you don't know who Andrew Mirosh is, he's probably one of the best chefs in Queensland. He's a professional fisherman and he owns his own seafood uh, uh, business. So. I've asked him what is the best way I can possibly look after my fish when I catch them. So Andrew's told me, brain spike, then you gill cut, you hang them in a bucket for five minutes, let them bleed out, put them in a nice icy slurry, and keep them there. So we're gonna do that to half the fish today. And the other half, I'm just gonna whack in my esky with ice, as I usually do. And at the end of the day, we're gonna do an honest comparison and fill up the fish and just see exactly what the difference is because if there is a big difference I 100% will be brain spiking, gill cutting and bleeding my fish properly from now on. So anyway, we're going to get a few liveys in the tank which we've already got. We're going to head offshore today and we're going to spend a good day jigging, dropping deep. This dolphin is just having a ball, eh? <laughs> and uh, try and get our bag of snapper and some pearlies and stuff like that. So, Stay tuned, it's gonna be a fun day, I reckon. Hello, oh, see the dolphin come up after him? <laughs> there he is, he's looking, he's looking. Yeah, mate, come here. Hello. Having a good old time in there, the boys. Yeah, mate, you're on bloody TV. Almost through the bar now, just watching a couple of rollers come in. A little one metre easterly on it today, so it's pretty nice actually. But this bar gets extremely ugly. It's claimed lives and copious amounts of boats, so even charter boats have uh, rolled in this bar, so it's not one to be messed with. But anyway, today is good. We're going to head out. Chase some fish. Righty, -o, so just cruising up, doing about 25 knots on the way up to a place called the Northern 29s or 29s. Come over a show doing 25 knots with the Furuno, and um, we've got what looks to be like a heap of squire and snapper on there, but putting a bait runner. We just had a jig down, didn't want a bar of it. Just got a bait runner out. Dave's dropping straight to the bottom. What do you got on, mate? Got line on with the pilly, mate. Love having my bait runner out, just with a four ball, something like that. We're in 55 meters. I'll get it down to about that 30 meter mark, and I'll let Rodney do the rest with the bait runner on usually. <laughs> How can you not get the bite through that, mate? Alrighty. Ooh. You'll have to watch your line there, Dave. Yeah, I'm getting it in now, Hooked up to a pretty good fish here. No. Shark. Oh. Gotcha. This old mister. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> Last time we were in the boat, we called a shark. It was a bloody big cobia. Hey? Uh, all right, we went back up and started another drift. Doesn't feel like a snapper. No? No. We've hooked up straight away again. 
hopefully Mr. Shark stays away. Oh, so it was a little pearly. So he's gonna go in the esky without having anything done to him. Next pearly we get, mate, we'll brain spike, gill clip. These don't have a real lot of uh, blood in them anyway. They're beautiful eating these ones, but we'll try it with all the fish that we get. All right, Whitey has dropped a livey down. That we got from earlier and uh, it's been walloped. Last more than two seconds. Yeah. That's on a Pat mate. It is. What Lazy are you calling way. it? Lazy way of fishing, eh? <laughs> what have we got here? Bloody cod, mate. Oh well. Oh, he'll go alright. Don't snooze at that. That's a good sign that it doesn't get fished much. And you pull cod off things. All right, gold spot. Oh, mm -hmm. oh there you go. All right, we've moved out to another little spot, not far. We've got some, uh, looks like some good fish there. No bait in that, just good individual fish. So that is definitely worth a float through in these conditions. All right, I just got wallop float line. This will be a decent snapper, this, I'd say. Just on a set of two gangs with a half pilly. Alrighty. Nice size snapper, eh? Good eating size, so. There it is. All right, now we're gonna cut through his gills. Put him in this bucket to bleed out for a couple of minutes. And then we'll whack him in that ice slurry up there, so. All right, we'll get back in, see if we can get another one. Just put that one straight in the ice. All right, so this snapper, squire, whatever, he's bled out nicely. So he's gonna go straight into this icy slurry. At the moment, we've got a north to south current with a southwest to northeast wind, and the wind's puffing and dying off, puffing and dying off. It's hard to get a good drift because it keeps blowing us different directions. So, hopefully, it makes up its mind soon. It's frustrating. Oh, I've got something else here, a little squire, probably just legal. That's all right, that's all we need for this little experiment. Is uh, you can see on the screen what we're fishing like that there's a bigger patch but we can't drift over it because the boat <laughs> the wind keeps blowing us different directions every couple of minutes but anyway all righty so this fella here he's just gonna go in the esky no brain spiking no bleeding anything just gonna go in there we can do that with six more fish or so we should get an honest sort of you know Good old Willy weather has uh, updated the forecast. My mate just sent me a thing and said, have fun out there. There was barely any chance of rain today. They've updated it to 50% chance now and a chance of a thunderstorm. I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> but that does not look good. There's actually a, a black thunderstorm, which usually means hail and everything coming. And it's the middle of winter. Well, you wouldn't read about it, would you? So that throws a massive spanner in the works. Those storms look horrendous now. So we're going to, um, we're out about 15K off any island at the moment here. So we're going to go in close to Stratty, wait for these storms to pass and, uh, and then keep fishing. 
Hopefully it turns it on. Mate, we might have to hide up under the front latch. <laughs> Alright, we're starting to make our way in. I just thought I'd show you this. It's 10 o'clock in the morning in winter. Bugger all rain forecast. That's a big black storm coming straight for us. It's red and black on the radar, so it's going to get a bit wild out here soon. Anyway, we'll sit it out and can hear the thunder here. You know? Right, oh, so <laughs> we've rigged up a bit of a V sheet here. Use the GoPros as a bit of a clamp. Got the V facing down, obviously, so no one thinks we're in trouble. Although, by the look of this, we could be. to 140 meters an hour, about 30 k's off the island. The current's right up, wind against current, so I thought we'll use the electric reels, put some really big sinkers on them. And uh, <laughs> I forgot the power cords for both the electric reels, so we've now got 32 ounces of lead on, and we're winding ourselves, so nothing is going right today for us. Anyway, about 400 metres of line out. How's that treating you, Dave? Not very kindly. <laughs> 140 metre wind with a little fish on. This is really hard work. <laughs> 32 ounce lead. And the fish aren't even big. Anyway, 
that's about the best we can pull off it at the moment. Little pan sized snapper. Anyway, got a nice big old knot here now. I'm gonna brain spike him, gill cut him, bleed him out in the bucket, put him in the front. Hopefully we can get another one, put that one just normally in the esky. That'll give us a bit of comparison. So to gill cut these fish, you can see inside his gills here, just cut them, that's where their blood runs through. And it just bleeds them out straight away. We've got another one now, 34. And it's good actually, because they're all around the same size. Make that five. He looks all right, Davo. <laughs> All right, so it's another 40 centimeter panty, but at least they're the same size. So they're gonna have the same amount of blood in them, which is good. Mine's just gonna go in my esky as normal. Couldn't be far now, mate. There he is. It's like a nice squirrel. That's better. Hopefully he's hit the hook all right. Better fish. Oh, man. 140 meters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's going to get brain spiked and gill clipped and looked after. All right, so we're just trying to get this one last squire, snapper. Uh, we've had a few good fish. Oh, here we go. Whoop. 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 Right, camera down for a sec. As I was saying, just trying to get one last squire, and Dave just had a really good pearly. He come off uh, right next to the boat. Dave just stopped to check if the hooks were in it still, and that's yeah. the thing with pearlies, eh? In depth, especially, you find when you're using electric reels, you, you use lose a lot because the hole tears more and more in their mouth. Very soft mouths, but yeah. The wind's backed right off now. It's not blowing much at all. It's still pretty sloppy out here because of the storm and then probably had 15 knots of south uh, southerly come through after that. It's nice now, it'll be a bit of a choppy trip home taking it on that front quarter. We have one more drift here. Hopefully we can get a pearly or something and, um, and stop at one more spot on the way home and then we're gonna head in, so. What do you think about hand winding in 140, Dave? It's not fun, eh? Got that thing sitting there. Can't use it. That's a hand one. We've worked hard today. And we risked our life. Not really risked our life, but it was pretty scary. Hey? What is he? Big lead. <laughs> You're making that lead look heavy anyway. Right, we're going to cruise in, have one more drop somewhere, and we're going to head home. All right, we've moved back in here shallow. First drop straight away. Dave's hooked up to something all right. Not too bad. I've got a massive knot. We'll come back to this. Oh, nice pearly. Not too bad. Very good pearly. Happy days. Yep. All right, so. What did we do to the last one? Is he in this esky? So brain spike, gill brain cut, spike this one? Brain spike and gill cut on this yep. one. All right. Yep. All right, he's been brain spiked. Okay, so coming in. <laughs> um, through these ones. Rightio, so we've got our bag of snapper and squire. So that's four each with gill cut, brain spiked, Put it in the bucket, iced them up straight away, took as best care if we could, or four of them. Four of them we just chuck straight in the esky, like I usually always bloody do. And um, we got two pearlies, one with brain spike, gill cut, same deal, bled it all properly, straight on ice, and the other one straight in the esky with the rest of them. So uh, we're gonna call it a day now. We're gonna start heading in through the bar, then through Morton Bay back uh, to the boat ramp. I'm going to get some drone footage on the way home because there's some pretty cool stuff to see. There's whales all around us at the moment. So tomorrow afternoon, so Andrew Mirosh said that he likes to leave them on ice for 24 hours. 
So I'm going to leave them on ice for 24 hours and tomorrow I'm going to fillet them all up and do a proper comparison of all the fillets and all that so you can see exactly what the difference is. So uh, stay tuned. But anyway, let's put the bird in the sky, Dave. Hear a few cars driving past like this. Anyway, it's been about 24 hours, so that's as I was instructed. That's about the best time to leave them for before filleting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through. I'm going to fillet all the ones that were brain spike, gill cut, looked after really well. I'm going to go through fillet all the ones that were just put in the esky on ice, and I'm going to see what the difference is. I'm actually really interested. In seeing what this is like because this is a discussion I've had so many times with people uh, all right so anyway we'll get these fish out all right I'm gonna do this as honest as I can and pick the fish that are very close to the same size okay so this one we've got out of the yellow esky which is all being brain spiked gill cut and everything this one here I've got out of the esky we've just put them straight on the ice first thing I notice so this is the one that has been gill cut brain spiked. And this one has just been put in the esky now. I can't see if you can tell. But the eyes on the one that were just put straight into the esky are crystal clear black. The ones that were um, gill cut and brain spiked has a bit of fog to them, grey fog. I don't know if that matters or anything, but um because he was slushing around in the esky a little bit when the ice melted he's got a few marks here but i guess the real test is about to come now when uh i start filleting all right first i'll do the one that's been brain spiked and gill cut
This one is definitely a lot colder than the other one. It's a freezing, like, having my hands on him. It's really, really cold. Like, Okay, there's the fillet. Definitely does look nice and white. I'm gonna fill it the other side of him. Alrighty, now I'm going to skin. I'm now I'm gonna skin and bone the brain spiked and gill cut fish. Wow, there's definitely still a fair bit of blood in him. A little bit harder to skin because they've been rattling around in that esky. All right, there's the fillets from the fish that was brain spiked and gill cut. There's definitely still a lot of blood on that. All right, so I'm just gonna leave him there for two seconds. All right, this fish was just thrown straight on ice. All right, there's our first comparison. This fish here was brain spike and gill cut. This fish here was put in. As for blood through this region, I really can't notice a difference. This was a slightly bigger fish, caught in the same area, slightly smaller fish, but the amount of blood through certain areas is exactly the same. What I can notice is that this fish that was iced up really quickly and um, and gill cut was firmer and a bit nicer to fill it, you know, not going mushy and, and all that sort of stuff. This one was a little bit softer and you know, when you're boning it and that, your fingers would tear the fish apart a little bit more. The skin on this fish is definitely a bit pinker, whereas the flesh on this one is whiter. So I would say out of that, yeah, this does look like a nicer fillet and was definitely easier to fillet, all right? So I'm gonna move on to the next fish now. Old Johnny come lately's turned up. <laughs> 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 all right, this is the second lot of fish. This one here has been gill cut brain spike. This one's been put straight in the ASCII. Okay, I filleted the one that we brain spiked, gill cut. Much blood in it, is there? Yeah. Look at that. Definitely different. It's a massive difference, eh? All right, so they're skinned now. Once again, the bloodline through the backbone there, there's no difference. I can't notice a difference in the fillets, but 100% there is more blood through these flesh areas than in the one that was brain spiked and gill cut. Definitely. You can see all that pink down the bottom there. And nothing in the one that was brain spiked and gill cut. Test number three. Fish number three. Definite difference. Again, I hope the GoPro's showing it. There's blood all through the flesh here. I never really noticed it too much until now. And this is nice and white. So I'll hold up the fillet. Hopefully you'll be able to see. You can see all the pink through the actual flesh. And then when I hold this, 
it's much wider. Also, I'm finding the one that was iced on a real cold brine and um, and gill cut and everything's easier to fill it. Like the firm, the flesh isn't mushy, and um, you know, usually I'll put some fish, some finger divots and stuff like that in it, but this one's definitely nicer to cut. So, what are you finding? Hundred percent, mate. You can see the blood yeah. in that flesh. So Dave wasn't a. Uh, wasn't a bleeder either, were you? Only on mackerel and that, yeah. yeah. Most reef fish just went straight in the esky. Yep. So was I. So Massive difference though. I'll admit it, 100%. There's a big difference. Bit hard to compare these two, but if you were thinking anything, the flesh in this one would be whiter than the big one. So it'll be interesting, actually. Even with that smaller fish, they're still all pink through the fresh flesh the whole way through, actually. And that might not bother you, but... This, definitely whiter, even the big fish. So that's a big fish compared to a small fish. The big fish, still whiter all through the flesh. So 100%, that's definitely, definitely makes a difference. We've crushed the theory, Dave. It's done, mate. <laughs> I've proved myself wrong. What was that, you were wrong? I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now, pearlies. Again, to look at, the one put straight on ice, crystal clear eyes. The one that was brain spike gill cut is hazy eyes. But like Dave said just then, that's probably got more to do with the freezing cold water that it was in. To touch, this one's a lot firmer. Feel that, Dave? Much firmer, isn't it? Yeah. That one. It's been so a the one that was on there. Firmer. These fellas are sensational eating. My favourite fish to eat. Um, and they don't have much of a bloodline anyway. But I'm going to see what difference it makes. Much firmer. Like, I'm, I can push my hand on there, right on there. It's not squishing. And not leave squishy marks, really. Whereas that one, I felt like push on him and he's about to bloody... Mm. Go right through it, so anyway. I know I've said it, but I know what I'm doing from now on. Yep. Alright, once again, pearl perch. The bigger pearly you'd think would have more blood, so if it was going to not make a difference, that one would be pinker. But this one, the smaller one, 100%. Once again, even in the pearl perch, makes a massive difference. You can see all the pink through the flesh here. Not as much in this one. This here, nothing, just white. Uh, this was harder to fill it. Uh, this was the one that was just chucked on the ice. This was harder to fill it, a bit mushy. And uh, yeah, hard to handle. Where well, this one was nice and firm, still is. Feel that, Dave, look. Yeah. <laughs> it's breaking apart, isn't it? Massive, massive difference. So, that one was gill cut and put in the slurry so so there you go we've done four snapper and one pearly and different sizes and everything we were as honest as we could with it all 100 percent gill cutting and brain spiking makes a big difference actually when i first looked at them i thought oh geez the ones that's uh brain spiked and gill cut they look a bit rougher than the other ones but once you cut into them uh, there's a massive difference. Filleting was easier, whiter flesh, easier to handle. Uh, so look, 100%, the gill cutting and brain spiking makes a big difference. So bleeding your fish that way, 100%. I'll be doing that from now on. Um, it'd be good to see what it's like with pelagics and that as well. So I think that'd make a massive difference. The brain spiking, I think more is is for putting them out of their misery really quickly. And also the stress of being chucked in their skin, all that makes their heart pump quicker and pumps blood through the flesh and stuff like that. So it puts them out of their misery. Gill cutting gets all the blood out and freezing them obviously makes the f flesh a lot better to, um, not freezing, putting them on a really cold ice slurry for 24 hours makes the flesh a lot more easy to fill it and do less de damage to the fillet. So anyway, I uh, hope everyone has enjoyed that. 
Dave. <laughs> thanks for weathering the storm <laughs> with me, mate. That's okay, anytime. All right, so thanks for watching. From now on, brain spike and gill cut your fish. I will be. And uh, see you on the next episode. Cheers. Bye, Dave. Yeah. Bye, Dave. Bye, mate. If you enjoyed this episode and are keen to see more, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook and Instagram.